New episode of We Are 757 The Show. We got the homie Bryce Mitchell. What's going on? How you doing? All right, man. I see you limping. Yeah, yeah. What man. happened? Ruptured Achilles, man. Doing playing basketball. Playing basketball, yep. Mm. Yep. yep. <laughs> third, third week of rehab. Third week. So hopefully you can get back on my feet soon. Mm, so I see you got the head coaching job at Tawa. How you feeling about that? Feeling good. Feeling good. It's been a... Um, well, I think I got it back in March, so it's been a nice little summer, nice off season for us. Mm-hmm. Um, my confidence, confidence has definitely gotten a lot better, or has grown over the off season, um, just being around my guys and being around the coaching staff. So it's been a lot of fun. How you um you was a assistant coaching right for how long you were doing that? I was an assistant coach for uh, two seasons. Two seasons. Mm-hmm. I had those seasons go. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> definitely uh, some growing pains. Some growing pains. Did you see like coach did? You talked to Tom Gonzalez or Coach Gonzalez before, like, like, did he tell you that oh, I'm about to retire, man? I'm about to. Just no, he first. never said. He never really said that he was getting ready to retire. I mean, I kind of saw it coming before I got down here. I mean, it was a goal of mine because you know I was up in Winchester coaching mm-hmm. at Hanley High School before okay. I came back down here. But it was a goal of mine becoming a head high school coach, and obviously, no better place than Tallwood, at mm-hmm. least for my situation. Um, but I kind of knew Coach G was going to be on his way out the door. He never specifically said, like, hey, I got two more years. But I kind of looked at that two-year window. I was like, okay. Um, but when, when I first got back down here in 2017, I said, I think in two years, I'll probably get it. And it did happen. Yeah. I mean, we, we glad we got you. I mean, you know the kids in the area. And it's just, I don't know. I feel like you care. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I definitely do. I definitely like it, do. I would be like you, you know, Coach T. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I know he likes to coach. Um, mm-hmm. um, I don't know a lot about uh, Kaleo. Kaleo, Kaleo. Kaleo. Yeah, um, he's got a good heart. I know, heart. I know he's, heart. A, he's a good basketball player. Oh, I don't yeah. know if he know the kids in our area as much. He does, as he does. And he's actually he's been here as an assistant coach since... I, I know for a while. Yeah. For a while, yeah. Because I was... When I went to college in 2010, I was up in Winchester from mm-hmm. 2010 to 2017. So when I was coming back after 2014 when I graduated... To come like over the summer because I got a job up in Winchester. Mm-hmm. So when I was coming back, I was coming to games and you know he was an assistant on the staff. And then Coach Brennan was telling me a lot about him. Yeah, he, yeah. I think he first came to speak to the guys because he um, was in the Navy. Then got stationed down here. Uh-huh. Now he uh, works in real estate. Yeah. So he came to speak to the guys and then Coach G. I made him, maybe asked him or he asked Coach G if he can hop on staff and he's been there ever since. So he's been there for. A little while. Oh, he's been consistent, yeah. but I'm, I'm talking about like I, I haven't seen him. Like I see you at AAU games. Oh yeah, you yeah, know yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like to try to pull the kids, uh, yeah, come in the tour, even just having a chance. Because I feel like now since social media started going, mm-hmm. tour has been on a downhill. It yeah. hasn't been like a winning. I mean, we had a, like little good players like Tyree. Yeah, like, yeah with Tyree. Tyree and Adrian were there. Yeah, yeah they had a little, little run. I think. It definitely helps having a younger coach that's involved like, with social media mm-hmm. that understands the game. Um, like we said, like you know, like Claire was not really at any AAU games. I think you can see that happen a little more in the future uh-huh. because I don't know if he didn't have a motivation. I don't know, you know, no knock on Coach G, but obviously yeah. he's older, so he didn't go to those middle school games. He didn't go to the AAU games. Um, but with my, you know, me being 27 and me having the energy to do it, you know, I'm definitely looking to get my staff out there, like. This past off season was a little different, just trying to learn the ways. You know, I was out there for some. Yeah, I wasn't out there. Like I didn't travel like to Richmond to watch <laughs> Team Loaded or anything like that. Like the <laughs> local stuff we did. Um, but I think this next off season, I think a lot of people are going to see us a lot, out a lot more. It's not like we out there recruiting. I'm just uh-huh. trying to go. I want to go watch my guys. I want to see my guys play AAU, and I want to see how successful they can be over the summer and so forth. Okay. Yeah. But I, I mean, I feel like it was. I feel like it's going to be good. I feel like. I feel like it, it was just no reason that Brandon Middle School was always good. Yeah. <laughs> and then talk, and then you see none of the kids go to talk. Oh, you're like, God. what the crap? When I was up in Winchester and I was, I was hearing about it, and it was the transition from like when I was there when I graduated 2010. It was you went to the school you were supposed to go to. Mm-hmm. And then when I was up in Winchester, <laughs> I'm hearing all this stuff. I'm like, man, you got kids. I mean, bring them one. 
this school. And this uh-huh. and I'm like, bro, what? I'm like, you know, he's supposed to go to Tallwood. Yeah. Like, no, not anymore, man. <laughs> Stepdad's living in this area, stepmom's living in this area, they can go use different addresses, kids know. I mean, I'm not really, I don't really get involved in none of that stuff, you uh-huh. know what I'm saying? I just focus on the guys that I have, but yes, you best believe I will be at Brandon Middle School. I have already <laughs> talked to the coach, I talked to the AD, believe I will be there, uh-huh. definitely. So, I mean, uh, going going a little back, uh, you are a triplet, mm-hmm. how was that like growing up and how did that help your competitive nature? as playing sports so it's just anything. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, man. I really <laughs> wasn't that competitive growing up. For real? No. I knew I was good at basketball. I wasn't a star, but like I knew I was good at basketball. And I knew out of us three and we had our we have an older brother too, Brandon, mm-hmm. and we got a uh, my dad's son was the oldest, Anthony. Mm-hmm. He was um he didn't live with us but he would come around but um between us three, me, Byron and Brian I mean, we weren't like super, super competitive. Me and Byron, we would play one on one outside all the time. Uh-huh. And he's, you know, he played football at Shannon Door, same yeah. squad I went to. And he has coaching there too, uh, full time. But me and Byron played one on one outside. We would make up these different games and play one on one. We would lower the hoop mm-hmm. and we try to dunk on each other all day. It was more just about fun, bro, for real, for real. We lived in a cul de sac and we just, we just played. I think I got started getting more competitive when I got to high school and Aaron Clark, my best friend, when he came and came around. That's when I started really getting a little more competitive because he was so competitive. Mm-hmm. And him being so competitive, I was like, I'm, all, I'm always hanging out with him. And like he, I mean, he wouldn't even let me <laughs> kick the game with a field goal and Madden. He'll hold the, the L, L1, L2 and uh-huh. so the screen would pull, pull up. <laughs> so I'm like, come on, man. He's like, nah, man, forget that. He ain't going to get the game easy. I'm like, that's just crazy. <laughs> so he really bought the competitive nature out of me. Like me and my brothers, yeah, we competed, but I really wasn't too, too competitive growing up. And I, I also think that was my downfall too. Like when I was in high school, I wasn't really super competitive. So I think I held back a lot, like in terms of playing hard. I mean, I played hard on the court, but I could have done a lot more if I was a little more competitive. What was, um, did you play at Brandon? Oh yeah, I played one year. I got cut uh, sixth and seventh grade. My seventh grade year was Jared Jernigan, <laughs> Keith Taylor, uh, uh, D. Witt, uh, uh, X. They had X yeah, now. X. Mm-hmm. Uh, I won't. I made the last cut, <laughs> okay. but I made it eighth grade year though. Yeah, so just one year at Brandon. Okay, so what? So you and your brothers. Did you only play basketball? Your brother played football, or did so, you play football too? I swear, I seen yeah, you yeah, yeah, I played football. So uh, freshman year of high school, all three of us played football. I made JV basketball team. Uh, I think Byron got cut from the JV basketball team, or he, I don't even know if he went out, honestly. Sophomore year, Brian stopped playing sports. He was really into like, the SCA, the student government stuff. Mm-hmm. I continued to play football, Byron continued to play football. We both played JV and varsity football. We both made JV basketball. Then the end of sophomore year, I got moved to the varsity for basketball. Mm-hmm. Okay. Junior year, it's like we all went our separate ways. Brian still in student government. Byron kept with football, stopped playing basketball, and I stopped playing football. And then it just went like that for the rest of our years. How did y'all? How was y'all grades? Y'all no, decent, year? decent. Yeah. <laughs> I was more like middle of the pack. Like I wasn't like like Brian. He had like a three point, you know, whatever. He was yeah. up there, man. I was just kind of just. I was just there, man. I was just kind of <laughs> coasting through, man. I had two, four, maybe graduate, but it wasn't nothing serious. Nothing crazy. Did you, uh, did like, being at Tolwood, did they like talk to y'all about your grades and making making sure that your grades match your SAT scores and all of that? Or- uh, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, Coach D tried to stay on us about that a lot, especially because he knew going into my senior year, he knew all five of us, our starting five, he was like, you. Because we were all seniors. I mm-hmm. know oh, our starting center was going to be a junior, but he knew the rest of us, uh, uh, me, Aaron, Jordan, and Kobe. He was like, you know, stay on it because you guys are going to go play college basketball. So he, he knew he had a good, solid, you know, core coming back, so he stayed on us about all that stuff. What, um, how was your college recruitment? I mean, I'm sure, I mean, you just play just like me, D3. We were mm-hmm. three kids. But mm-hmm. uh, what was, uh, did you take any visits or Shenandoah? You was what made you pick Shenandoah? So I took one visit with Byron because he was gonna he was going D three as well. But Byron had an offer for football from ODU and Norfolk State, but I think ODU was still a little bit on the come they, up. Yeah, they wasn't at that playing time. that. They yeah. were just having a team. And then Norfolk State, uh, I don't know. They just uh, they wanted him to play another position. I think he wanted to play safety. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he had a bunch of D threes. So it turns out, honestly, all the D threes that recruited him recruited me for basketball. Um, Cause my senior year, I mean, I wasn't. I averaged like six point eight points a game. Mm-hmm. I had, like I was a good defender. Like I take pride in that. I was mm-hmm. the best defender in the state. <laughs> I don't care what nobody says. Um, 
But like, I mean, I wasn't getting like crazy, crazy looks. I had a lot of Odet looks. Mm -hmm. Okay, Virginia Wesley was gonna be hard. Masito really wanted me. Um, I think EMU EMU sent me a letter once. My I had a D two look from Fayetteville State after Virginia Prep's game. I had like twenty six points. They contacted me. They they started looking at me a little bit. Um, Averett was my only visit other than Shenandoah um, because Byron went there to go visit. But then Shenandoah reached out to Byron. And then they found out about me, and then you know we went to go take a look, and the kind of just fell in love with it. Four hours away, yeah, we wanted to get out. We wanted to leave Virginia Beach. I kind of saw myself as being very immature around here, mm -hmm. and I knew I needed to get out <laughs> so I can grow up a little bit. But I knew I wanted to go with Byron in college. We both wanted to go to the same school because we knew we could probably help each other out throughout the four years. Do they have like a program where they could get twins and they could give you a lot of money? No, yeah, that Russ D three man. You don't get nothing, nothing like that. I mean, you get like you know we got some extra money <clears throat> as the years went on because they saw us being like leaders in the, on the community, I'm sorry, on the campus mm -hmm. and in the community. So they gave us a little extra money and our grades were good. You know, we both had over three O's. So my, my GPA got a lot better in college, in college. way better in college. Um, but no, nah, not, not, not like that. Mm. Yeah, I was, I was mad when I was, I found out that you can't get no scholarship in D3. You didn't know before you went? No, I ain't know. Basic, well, when I went to see, and you didn't recruit me. Coach uh -huh. Jern told him about me. Because okay. I, I wanted to go I wanted to go to a, a prep school or something. Oh, okay. Because I felt like I could have played at a higher level. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? But whatever happened, Coach Jern was like, uh, you can't go to prep school. Your grade's too good. I was oh, like, what does that even dang. mean? Yeah, I was like, what does yeah. that even mean? But that's a fact, though. That's a fact. But, but I, when I was seeing Dante and them, they all like going ahead, like getting left back mm -hmm. to and they like killing, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I thought I was be able to try to do the same thing. But mm -hmm. so I take the visit to EMU. He don't know who I am. Like uh -huh. coach, it's like Wait, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a tryout. So it was like 40 people there, mm -hmm. and then uh, DJ Henson he played at. I forgot what school he played at, but he knew me because he played against him um, in 2006. He played at Midgeville, so he knew my face. Mm -hmm. So I played with him. And I, out of 20 games, my team won 20, all 20 games. Oh, in the trial? Yeah. Okay. And I'm killing everybody, shooting uh -huh. everybody, doing whatever I want. Uh -huh. And then I'm leaving. He still, I still haven't met the coach. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving and he finds me uh, leaving. We go into the car. And he's like talking to me. He's like, yes, you're, you're so good. I was watching from up top, all of this, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And then he just convinced me to go there. And then that, that's how I went there. Mm -hmm. Didn't know me at all. Yeah. But it was because that my team never lost a game. Mm -hmm. and my whole team wound up going to EMU. Dang. But I just don't like D3 because they be having 25 people on the team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I think it's just the nature of the beast, right? I mean, that's just how mm -hmm. it is at D3. I mean, some schools are like that. Um, I mean, at Shenandoah, I mean, I didn't have a great college career. I mean, we didn't win a lot of games, but I was just happy to be there, happy to play college basketball. I mean, you I, make a lot of connect because that's what I oh, like yeah, yeah. college is about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was crazy. Winchester, Winchester is like a second home to me now. I'm going up there this weekend. Literally like a second home. Like, not even just for Shenandoah, just in the community. Because mm -hmm. um, after I graduated, I got a job at, a, at like an alternative school. I was working there for a year. Then I got into the uh, public school systems. So once you get into the public schools, you get to know the kids and you get to know the parents. And next thing you know, you're going to, you know, people's have like doctors houses with cookouts and things uh -huh. like that man so it's, it's definitely like it's like a second home to me that's the biggest thing for me like that i appreciate the most yeah i think feel like, i feel the same way even though i was only there for one year i feel like harrison bird it was like even though we was the d3 school and jmu was probably bigger mm -hmm. like, right down the street though. bigger yeah like people cared about the EMU. you got a lot of love yeah yeah, yeah. Like, it's that small that small oh, feel that yeah, small yeah. community feel mm. but all right, so you you at Shenandoah, mm -hmm. you leave there, you come back, and what was your first thing when you came back to uh, to Tallwood? Or did you you don't you don't teach at Tallwood, do you? No, I teach at Larkspur Middle. Oh, you teach? I teach husband B. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what? Um, so are you trying to move over to the Tallwood situation? I mean, it all depends. If they if they got an opening, obviously, then yeah, I gotta I gotta so make it easier for you. Oh yeah 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 definitely. But I have had I feel like I've gotten a lot of support. Between both like the administration at Larkspur and the administration at Tallwood, like 
Mr. Lawler, it's always assistant principal. I think he might have been a teacher when you were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's an assistant principal now. Like he's old, the assistant principal over athletics. Real supportive. I can shoot him a text. He'll check in on a guy. He'll give me some information about guys or whatever. Um, and then over at Larksburg, you know, they know like, hey, if I need to, you know, step out, um, you know, at the end of the day, like the last like 30 minutes, you know, I'll find coverage and, you know, they'll let me get over to shoot over to Tallwood. So it's been a lot of good support. So Larksburg is Green Run, right? Larksburg goes in the Green Run and Kentsville, yeah. Okay, so you see a lot of the, some good talent out there. I know they got. Yeah, they got. They, they definitely <laughs> have some. They uh -huh. definitely have some, especially my first year. My first year at Larksburg was when Rashawn Borders was there. He plays for Green Run now. I think he's playing varsity for him. He was in my class. Mm -hmm. he, I knew he was going to be good. <laughs> I knew he was going to be good, man. I think he's been playing varsity for him now, yep. So what? So what do you like as a coach now? Like, what do you look look for in a player? Like, I know because I know when I first tried out at Tollwood, like my first year, freshman year, we had about eighty people try out for the basketball team. Mm -hmm. The second year, <laughs> twelve, oh, <laughs> and that Jesus. was the twelve. And that was the twelve team, right? Yeah, this is like, but I think it was like a transition, like where Mint, Mint was just, I don't know. What happened? But everybody knew who was on the team already. Yeah. So what? So what is that like? What do you look for? Uh, right now, is I think it's more for me. Is just trying to establish like a good culture. Like I, I saw what you guys were doing because what you were a senior when I was a freshman. I think you guys were in 07. 07. Mm -hmm. And like I, I paid attention to everything, and I think that's why I became a coach at a younger age. Because I was really paying attention to like a lot of things, just like behind the scenes type stuff. Like I saw the the culture you guys had, like how tight you guys were. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like I know that I had to help like throughout the years and yeah, that's yeah. what happened. I mean you guys won a regional championship then you know I look at how we were my senior year my senior year I think we were like 21 and 6 and we had a nice core group and we weren't honestly that talented mm. like we just were very very disciplined and we all knew each other yeah. my biggest thing is right now for my guys is just I'm trying to get them like get that culture established like you know I'm gonna I'm run I'm gonna I'm go with you know some young guys this year for varsity um, we got a couple guys that are kind of established. We really, like I would say, of the 15 that I'm thinking about keeping, depending on what happens during trials, I got a couple football players I know are going to come out. Um, you know, I think I think we can have a decent core moving on in the future, like moving forward. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've got to keep a lot of young guys so that I can start building that, mm -hmm. you know, that culture. But then also, there's a couple older guys who I think is really going to help out and be good leaders. And when they leave this next year, these are young guys are going to say, okay, now's my time to step up. In terms of looking for something in a player, I mean, that right that right there is kind of up in the air for me. I mean, obviously, I, I'm, I'm like kind of like blue collar in terms of working hard and being disciplined. I say the word discipline maybe 50 times <laughs> in every single workout. Like, yeah. to me, discipline is doing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, and how you're supposed to do it. If you do those things, you know, you'll be fine. But just like... I mean, before we get on, when we get on the track, before we start, like your foot over the line, like no, you're not mm -hmm. starting until you get your foot behind the line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or just jogging back from getting water. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, just yeah. being disciplined, little things. I always preach little things. So you know, if I see guys being disciplined, doing little things, you know, I would take a guy that's disciplined over a guy that's talented, that just doesn't, doesn't really care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's basically where I'm at right now with my guys. See, see, the reason we was uh, so disciplined, I felt like. Coach Mint, he wouldn't, uh, like, he had rules, like, you know, we couldn't have, nobody could have long hair. Mm -hmm. That, that cut a lot of people out. Yeah. Even, but, <clears throat> he want, he wanted you to, we had dinners mm -hmm. every day before the game at someone's house, at someone's on the house. And you had to, uh, every time you seen a play on the team, JV or whatever, a coach, you had to get contact and say, what's up? Mm -hmm. And game days, we all had to wear ties. Mm -hmm. And then, if you didn't do it, and he seen it, and we had to sit in the front of the class in every class. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't see it, if he seen, if you seen, like, you wasn't in the front of the class, or you didn't dap somebody up, or you didn't give him a shake, he would, uh, he wouldn't say nothing, but when you got to practice, it was running time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he, like we would be blowing people out. I remember we was blowing some team out, and... It was like the end of the game. Kelly threw it off the backboard and tried oh, no. to dunk and miss. Uh, oh, <laughs> and miss. And it was like, eh, game over. I mean, we won by twenty though. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? He ain't say nothing. 
everybody had five. The next day in practice, we probably ran like 20 suicides because of that. Mm -hmm. Like, it was everything was about discipline. Yeah. yeah. Everybody had to be unified, wear the same shoes, everything. It was like no individuality mm -hmm. unless that was shown in your game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was just crazy. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to get, get to that point with my guys. I mean, it's going to be a slow process from the beginning. Just... One, I'm not in the building, so I hate that part, honestly, because I know I can do a lot more like things like that if I was in the building. But I do think the young guys we have, I think we're going to be able to establish that discipline with them leading the way, like in the school, uh, doing certain things like that, like sitting up front. I'm huge, huge on all of us looking the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just got brand new travel gear for our um, away game, or not away games, but when we travel, our home games, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and, you know, I wanted to make sure, like I told the administration, I said, I, my guys are all looking the same. Like, I'm, we're going to get travel gear. Like, we're going to raise money for it. We're going to pay for it. But they're not keeping it. So then that way, the kids don't have to pay for the travel gear. And then you have, like, five kids that don't want to buy it. Their parents mm -hmm. like, I'm not paying that much money for it. Like, now it's no excuse. Yeah. We're all walking in the gym looking the same. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? On game days, you know, if we're not wearing a shirt and tie, you're wearing a travel suit and you're looking the same. So I'm huge on... Nobody above the team. Yeah. Nobody above the team. So in terms of that aspect, but I think with everything that I have in store for them, like everything I got in my mind, it ain't all been out yet. But it's gonna it's gonna pay off. Like in terms of our discipline, it's definitely gonna pay off. What are you looking like? What's your expectations for your first year? Expectation, <laughs> honestly, man, is just to establish a good core. That's that's my biggest thing, man. If we can get established, um, so that we can just grow in the future. I do think we're going to shock some people this year. I think we're going to have a pretty decent team. I, 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 I plan on winning more than nine games. You know, yeah. we'll see what happens. How many games is the season? 22. Okay. 22. So last year we won nine. I think the year before that we won 12. Okay. But, I mean, you know, I'm not really big. I'm not super big on, like, you know, wins and losses in terms of, like, oh, we're going to beat that team. We're going to beat that team. Or we're going to lose that team. You know, I'll make the schedule, go against whoever, and whatever happens, happens. I know we're going to be young. It's not going to be easy because I'm still learning. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I'm, I'll be the first one to admit, like, I'm still learning, still trying to get a hold of some things. Got my leg all booted up now, so it's going to be hard to get up and down the sideline this first season. But um, expectation-wise, you know, I just want to see my guys grow together. I really do. If we take some bumps, we take some bumps. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It ain't going to be like, a, you know, it's the end of the world type thing. Like, I, I, don't, I don't like end of the world long speeches, man. Like, you know, we lose, we lose. We just got to go back and watch the film. We got to figure out what we did wrong. And I'm huge on, like, doing what we do right. That's my big... I, I'm huge on doing what we do right. Like, I'm not worried about the other team. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about what we do. I want to get right what it is that we do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And stick to what we do. I was in high school. I think it was obvious that like, people were like, oh, yeah, you can be a coach one day. Because I was that guy, like, I was sending the group texts. You know, practice has been changing this time. You know, mm -hmm. be on time. I was going to the guys' houses and saying, yo, come on, we're going to practice. Or, you know, I was that guy to, you know, get guys to be quiet while Coach G was talking. So, you know, parents, like other parents, like of my teammates, they'd be like, hey, you being a good coach one day, blah, blah, blah. And um, I didn't want to coach high school when I got to college. When I got to college, my goal was like to go teach and to coach high school basketball. But then I kind of fell in love with college basketball. Mm -hmm. So throughout college, I was like, when I get done with college, you know, I'm hoping my coach is going to let me Big on. Bigger check. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that's true. But D3, you start off with like an assistant nah, D3, nah, nah, it nah, ain't nah, all that. Nah. So, my, you know, I got on at Shenandoah. My head coach then, Rob Pryor, he had me on as an assistant. Oh, okay. And I definitely love the fact that he allowed me to jump on as an assistant, but the college thing, it really my, it, it wasn't my thing. Like, I wanted to coach basketball. The recruiting thing, like, there was a couple times, like, I would get to practice. And they'd be like, yo, we need you to go to D.C. to recruit. And I'm like, I told my wife I was going to be home at 7 o'clock for dinner. It's 5 o'clock. <laughs> so I'm driving through traffic in the middle of D.C. going to see this kid play at 7 p.m. now. Mm -hmm. Getting there late and, you know, not that I didn't, I couldn't do it because I, I definitely have a disciplined mindset. Like, he said mm -hmm. to go do it, I went to go do it. But doing that consistently, like, that just really wasn't my thing. Like, the recruiting thing, I couldn't get on board with but it, so, some people can, some people can't. Yeah. So, you know, after that, I became the head eighth grade coach at Daniel Morgan Middle in Winchester. That's when I got into education. Okay. Right. So the head coach at Hanley High School, team that uh, played against Lake Taylor State Championship, uh -huh. he put me on because they fed into Hanley. So he added me to his staff as a middle school coach. And then I moved up to the high school and got on with the JV and the varsity in that same season. Mm. And then a year after that, I just stayed at the high school full-time coaching. 
So, I mean, I, I really wanted to coach, I guess you can say, back at the end of my high school years, mm -hmm. beginning of college. But then I started seeing, like, how things were in the school system and, like, how coaches do their thing with teaching and coaching. I kind of, like, fell in love with that. Like, yeah, I think I can make a huge impact with teaching and coaching. So I went that route. I got my master's at Shenandoah during that time in mm -hmm. education. And how long you was at Shenandoah? So 2010, 2014, and then I took a year off, and then I started my master's for two years. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, shit. Darius got his master's, too. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about going to get my master's, but I just don't know where I want to go to. I'm glad I did it when I did it, because I... <laughs> <laughs> man, I'll be trying to do so much, man. I, I can't go into my classroom. It'll be definitely online. Do it online. online. Yeah, so, do it online. Mm. So now <clears throat> that you at Tallwood, I know two of your players left before you even became a head coach. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? And they was like two of your better players. Mm -hmm. So like probably two of your better players, leaders, well, should have been leaders. Well, they were our <laughs> two best players. <laughs> how, 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 how does that, how did that like drop the stock of Tallwood? I mean, at the end of the day, I knew I was coming into a situation where I needed to like rebuild, right? I knew I was going to rebuild. Like having uh, Caleb Peterson, around definitely would have been great. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Wishing the best though, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, whatever. Having the Calvin Thomas would have been great. You know, but I think whatever situation they're in with their parents and where they're living at, you know, they're going to do their thing. But having them around would have been great, but I knew I was gonna rebuild regardless. I, I, have, to, I have to, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I don't have a choice. I gotta go, I gotta come with, you know, the guys that played Future League that were good. And our Future League team was Best future league team in the city. I mean, mm -hmm. for those ten games, they went nine and one, and lost in the playoffs to Grassfield to a very good future league Grassfield team. But we got talent on that future league team. And I'm like, I gotta deal with those guys. Now those other guys that left, you know, definitely would have <laughs> kept them around. And mm -hmm. you know, they definitely been leaders on the team, probably leading scorers. But you know, my confidence didn't really drop. Of course, I would love to have them, but again, you know, it is what it is. My thing is, you know, I told my coaching staff, I said, I ain't, I ain't chasing nobody. Not, not chasing nobody. I will, I've talked to guys that are coming up in our program mm -hmm. that I know for a fact other coaches are going to try to get. I've talked to them already. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'll sit down and talk to their parents. I'm I've told them straight up, like, if you, you come in next season, you average 20 as a sophomore, and you, you know what I'm saying, coaches are trying to come get you, you know, you do what's best for you. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? However, you know, here's what we have here, and here's what we can do here in the next few years, whatever. You know, I'm just trying to build relationships with my guys and and keep them around because I know I know how the game is. I ain't stupid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know Especially how the game now. Is. Yeah, everybody's a dog, man. Everybody's <laughs> trying to get theirs, man. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to build a relationship with these kids and build a program that back to where it used to be. You know, y'all were there. Y'all lived in College Park. Y'all were supposed to be there, and you enjoyed playing with each other. You won championships. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to take guys that are supposed to be at Tallwood and build with them grow with them, love them, get them to where they want to be at after college, I mean, sorry, after high school, and hopefully we can do a lot of winning on the way. But, you know, again, guys leaving, it didn't really, it didn't really start my confidence or bring me down at all, you know, mm -hmm. it is what it is, I wish guys the best, um, but I look forward to just moving on with what we have now, and I'm definitely excited with what we have, definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, it was good, it was good, uh... Talking to you, I, I definitely gonna be at them, them games. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm gonna talk to you behind the scenes about capturing a good moment for the team mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you coming. Uh, I appreciate it, bro.